sped down the events that are going on. Of course, we are partial to basketball first and foremost, but there is wrestling, there is swimming, and Mike McGarry can touch all those. But let's start with the basketball, Mike. It's uh, really a fun matchup in the girls' final at noon as Mainland is back in the championship game, but Atlantic High in the championship game. Look at the Vikings. Yeah, Atlantic City back in a CAL title game. First time uh, for the Atlantic City girls since the league went to the tournament format in 2012 and first time overall since they beat Holy Spirit by three points back in 2010. So it's been a decade for the Vikings, but they're back at Stockton at noon Saturday today. So how do you, if you're previewing that matchup between those two teams, obviously everybody knows Kylie Watson, uh, McDonald's All-American, going to, be a Division One player all the way on the Pacific Northwest in Oregon. Uh, but who else is stepping up for mainland? Who else is starting to shine for Atlantic High at this point? Yeah, I think you got two teams that are really playing well at the right time of the year. You know, you mentioned Kylie Watson, but you, uh, you look at mainland, Cadence Fitzgerald and Lila Schoen. Cadence Fitzgerald, a sophomore, uh, Lila Schoen, a junior. They have really emerged in the past couple of weeks as key contributors for uh, Mainland Regional. And I talked to Mainland coach Scott Betson yesterday for uh, my preview story of today's game. And he mentioned that, hey, you know, a lot of people refer to p players like Cadence, like Lila, as role players. But if they were on another team, if they were at another school, they'd be the number one player on that team. So, you know, Mainland, obviously, a lot of talent, a lot of players stepping forward to compliment Kylie. And and I don't think in the years that I've watched the Cape Atlantic League tournament, Mainland's had one of the toughest draws to get to a final. They had to play Middle Township in the first round, Middle Township, one of the top teams in South Jersey. And then they just play a great game with Wildwood Catholic the other night, win that game 42-40. So Mainland comes in peaking, and, and Atlantic City comes in playing their best basketball of the season. Atlantic City is as talented as... And as as much depth as any team in the Cape Atlantic League, you got Siani Red Howard, a senior. You know, Pete, she's one of those seniors. Seems like she's been in high school for about eighteen years, <laughs> basically. You yeah, know, yes. uh, you, you got Madison Bressel and and guards Sinai Garrison Macon, who who kind of create chaos on defense with their speed and quickness, and and can create shots on offense. You've got one a really great freshman. Six foot one, Quinara Cherry Montague. You know, she's a player to watch. She just seems to, you know, I was talking with a coach the other day and said she just seems to get taller every time, you know, we walk in the gym. She seems to have grown another inch and, and, uh, and get better. She's going to be really a player to watch going forward. So Atlantic City playing their best basketball this season, Mainland playing their best basketball, should really be a great game out at Stockton. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I saw you in person, what was it, uh, the last Monday, right, as I decided to check out the Atlantic City game against ACIT. Now, I, I, full disclosure, Kevin Dursa was on talking about the Flyers' free agent pickup. So, you know, I have 97.3 on in the car, and I get there. The game's supposed to start at 5. Kevin Durso's segment with Mike Gill going to be at 5. So, you know, what do I do? I stay in the car. I figure that's all right. I'll just get in there a couple minutes late. I walk in. It's like 15 to 4. Uh, I, maybe you can fill me in on why Atlantic City jumped out to such a fast lead. What happened? Atlantic City and its defense, what they do well – uh, is they put pressure on you defensively. They force turnovers, uh, especially that senior guard, Madison Bressel. I think she has close to 100 steals this season. They force turnovers. They're able to convert them into easy baskets. That's Atlantic City's game plan. They executed it perfectly against ACIT on Monday. They did it well in the first half against Ocean City on Thursday night in the semifinals. Ocean City, the defending champion, came roaring back. Atlantic City got some big baskets inside in the final two minutes to hold off Ocean City. So that's, that's Atlantic City's game plan today. They want to force you into turnovers and convert those turnovers for baskets, uh, easy baskets at the opposite end. They've done it so far in the tournament. We'll see if they can do it today. Mike McGarry with us, Press of Atlantic City. Big Cal Championship Saturday out at Stockton. Girls game. 18 and 7 Atlantic City versus 18 and 5 Mainland. That starts at noon. And of course, reminder, you can hear all the coverage right here on 97.3 ESPN. Well, on the boys' side of things, it's almost, a, and I like your angle you took, it's almost a chance for redemption or a chance to, you know, a do over for St. Augustine. St. Augustine and Wildwood Catholic. I mean, that is a fun boys' championship matchup. But what's going to happen? 
Well, who knows what we don't know what's going to happen today, but we do know what happened on January 22nd when these teams met down in North Wildwood and Wildwood Catholic's tiny gym. Wildwood Catholic overwhelmed St. Augustine. They jumped to a 16-2 lead. They won the game 82-43. The game finished with a running clock. The 39-point margin against a team, against a program like St. Augustine, kind of stunned South Jersey. So now St. Augustine has a chance. And St. Augustine remembers, but Wildwood Catholic coach Dave Dewey said his team has got to remember what happened January 22nd and the Crusaders have to be well aware that that loss is going to motivate uh, St. Augustine and have them ready to play uh, at 2 p.m. today at Stockton. So 2 p.m., and again, uh, the admission, if you you pay your money, that's you get two for the price of one. You know, get, get there for the girls' game, watch some of that, watch the boys' game as well. Uh, really, there's no better deal, quite frankly, for excellent basketball. And uh, we've, we've been asking people on Twitter, uh, you know, who they like. Uh, you might recognize this name. Nicholas Cuba uh, tweeted back and said, both games are going to be interesting. I'm going to take my son over for him. The Cal tournament continues to grow. I love what it's become. I love the eight-team format, which makes it a reward for a good season if you make it, because I grew up loving the Shore Conference Tournament. All, all good things from this Cuba guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, Nick Huber, of course, the uh, sports editor of, of, of the press. And, and again, we got to give the Cape Atlantic League some credit. The, you know, every this is the only tournament in South Jersey. Everywhere else in the state, you've got the short conference tournament finals tonight. You've got county finals up in North Jersey. Uh, I think I said it last week, you know, high school sports is about being the best on your block uh, at its basic level. And our block is the Cape Atlantic League. And so the Cape Atlantic League, and, they, and it's spread to other sports. They're having baseball and softball this spring. They have soccer and volleyball in, in, the, uh, in, in the fall, uh, this Cape Atlantic League tournament. I think it's a big success. And, and uh, you know, today is one of the marquee days of the high school sports season. Well, I'm going to steal one of your lines. Man does not live on basketball alone anytime you're covering something other than what I think is the primary sport of the day. Uh, we've got wrestling today, right? Region 8 at EHT, and then uh, also indoor track and state swimming. Uh, why don't we run through a few of those and see what's jumping out at you from those different sports that are all kind of in critical moments of their seasons as well. Yeah, I mean, the wrestling, as far as the wrestling goes, most of our wrestlers are at Region 8 at, at Egg Harbor Township, which does a great, uh, a great job uh, hosting that event. And this is the, the final step on your way to Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City next week. Uh, you know, some wrestlers to watch there. You got Mike Misita of St. Augustine Prep. Uh, at 195 pounds, Nick Sanino, a heavyweight from Motion City. Those are just a couple of guys that will be in action over there. And, and you know, every wrestler in the state wants to get to Atlantic City. They want to wrestle in Boardwalk Hall. They want to be in that atmosphere. Uh, you know, uh, the event uh, practically sells out Boardwalk Hall. Kids really talk about it. It's, it's kind of a life-changing event, wrestling there. Uh, it's something they remember the rest of their lives. So the region is, is the final step on the way to uh, egg, uh, on the way to be, uh, Boardwalk Hall right there. You've got state track up in Tom's River with a couple of champions yesterday. Ahmad Brown of Holy Spirit winning a state championship. Watch out for Lauren Prince, the junior sprinter from Egg Harbor Township. She'll be in action this weekend. Kevin Ansek, the distance runner from Mainland Regional, he'll be in action this weekend in Tom's River as they go for state championships. And then, of course, swimming, Katie McClintock of uh, Mainland Regional will be among the great swimmers uh, in the area as the swimming meet of champions winds down. So really, you know, this time of year, uh, this championship season, uh, good stuff all over the place. Now, because, Michael, we are going into the state playoffs, does this meet, was last night the last late night hoops roundup or, or does it? <laughs> Maybe we'll have some special postseason editions, late night hoops roundup, but it is winding down. And Pete, what will we do when the late night hoops roundup disappears? What will we do, uh, you know, about 11 o'clock at night when that uh, thing comes across? We'll have a couple of postseason editions, I'm sure, early next week. But you're right, the state basketball tournament starts Monday and, uh, you know, teams start getting eliminated uh, often pretty quickly. You know, uh, we should have a couple of teams make some good runs through the tournament. The mainland regional girls, 
the Atlantic City girls, uh, the Atlantic City boys, the Wildwood Catholic boys, St. Augustine. But the, the tournament starts on Monday, uh, and, and that's another great time of the year uh, just watching these elimination games happen. Yeah, no doubt. Mike McGarry with his Press of Atlantic City. Follow him at AC Press McGarry as he's our uh, high school source. And I tell people each and every week, subscribe to the paper. I got mine in my blue bag this morning right on my step. Didn't even have to go outside very much to pick that up and uh, peruse through it and read all the great work that Mike McGarry has. So just a loop full circle back to what's going to take place at Stockton today. Uh, I mean, First of all, the, the picture that you had with the article was Paul Rodeo with his arms crossed. Um, I got to see Paul Rodeo, the other Paul Rodeo, the son, right? And and how great St. Joe did against AC the other night. I mean, I thought that was a good storyline. I know they're not playing today, but, you know, father and son, that style of basketball, working the refs, uh, you got to love some of the storylines. Yeah, St. Joe boys basketball had a standout season. Uh, you know, they, they probably played, if you're going to look at the Cape Atlantic League tournament going into um, today, I mean, the first round game between Atlantic City and St. Joe at Atlantic City on Monday has them so far be the game of the tournament. It went to overtime. St. Joe able to win that game in overtime. It was their first CAL tournament win. Junior guard Marcus Pierce had 28 points. Jason Pervard, an Atlantic City kid who plays for St. Joe, had 16, came home and had 16. Then St. Joe goes to the semifinals Wednesday night at Abzagami. They give Wildwood Catholic all they can handle. Wildwood Catholic, however, uh, pulls away in the fourth quarter be, uh, behind a flurry of Taj Sweet dunks. The uh, Six foot eight West Virginia recruit with seven dunks in the game, including a great one handed dunk off an uh, uh, alley oop pass from guard Martin Angula that really put the exclamation point on the victory. And if you look back at the season St. Joe has had as they get ready for the state non public B tournament, you know, they really got a promising future with the sophomore forward Daniel Skillings and the junior guard Marcus Pierce. And uh, Wildwood Catholic, of course, in action today and in the state tournament as well. I mean, let's take a little deeper into Wildwood Catholic, too. This this small school down in North Wildwood, uh, how have they built themselves into what they are? Because they're they're on the on the verge of becoming, you know, a little historic. Yeah, I mean, both St. Augustine and Wildwood Catholic have won the Cape Atlantic League tournament three times. So today somebody's going to win it for the fourth time. And that'll be the most in league history. And you really got the two dominant programs of the past five years meeting today. Wildwood Catholic is the two-time defending champion. Before that, St. Augustine won the tournament three years in a row. Wildwood Catholic, uh, sometimes the stars just align, Pete. You get players to come together. Uh, Taj Feet, six foot eight. Uh, Jaleel White, six foot five, going to Temple. Add in Jacob Hopping, uh, a six foot two swing guard who's headed to the College of New Jersey, who, who plays uh, Stockton today for the NJAC Championship at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, Hopping will be going to the College of New Jersey. That's a great Division Three program, and Hopping has really been uh, at his best in the fourth quarter when Wildwood Catholic has needed them, has needed him the most. So you just put in all that sort of, um, you know, uh, kismet basically, and Wildwood Catholic is one of the state's top teams. They played in elite games all season long. It uh, seems like every Saturday they were playing one of the state's best teams, so they are definitely battle-tested and, and ready for today's game. You know, uh, when they changed the word from parochial to non-public, uh, that didn't fool anybody. Uh, you know, the folks that are out there that are lifers say, uh, we, we know how these programs work, but, but if we're scratching below the surface a little bit, why Wildwood Catholic as opposed to a uh, spirit or a prep or some of the other places that uh, St. Joe even that, that have the ability to draw from multiple locations. Why did Wildwood Catholic get the edge and, or, or be in the position they're in? Well, they've done a great job down there attracting kids to their programs. And most of those kids live down there in that Cape May courthouse, middle township, uh, Wildwood area. So, uh, I mean, it's just a, a good group of kids that have, grow, that have grown up in that area. And Wildwood Catholic able to attract them to their school. And, and the difference is really uh, Taj Speed. He's, he's a, a generational type of player. Uh, you know, he, he's six foot eight, uh, seven dunks the other night, impacts the game on offense and defense, and really 
compete at the high state level, the high non-public level where you're talking your Roselle Catholics, your Patrick schools, uh, Rainey, you know, uh, Gil St. Bernard's to compete at that level. You really need uh, size and a, and, a, and a big player like that. And, and Wildwood Catholic has it in feet. And then they have it also in, in Jaleel White, you know, the six foot five guard having the temple. So you really got two players that don't come along that often. They're both at Wildwood Catholic and they're a big reason why the Crusaders are a success. So uh, Mike Gill put a story up on our 973ESPN.com website about the bizarre play, the the block shot, and then the basket. Did did, did you see that sequence the other night out at Absagami? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's a, you know, those are a couple things I've seen this year that I, I that I've never seen before. One was that play where the St. Joe player uh, kind of ripped the ball out of Taj Feet's hands. The ball bounced on the floor and then bounced up and into the basket. Now, I've seen a defensive player kind of go for a rebound and kind of tap the ball, and it goes into the, inadvertently into the basket. But I've never seen a ball kind of ripped out of a player's hands, bounce on the floor like almost behind the two players, and then bounce into the basket. You know, I've, I've never seen that before. You know, and the, the earlier thing I've never seen is I've never seen a player – sort of grab the opening tap and go and score in the wrong basket. But I've seen both this year. So, Pete, if you stay along long enough, who knows what we will see in the future. 100%. Basically. And if you're out there listening and want to see the amazing shot and block shot and basket, uh, Mike Gill's got an article up on 973ESPN.com. Plus, we want to remind all our listeners and all the people out there that all the basketball action today that's going to take place out of Big Blue, you can watch the game live video on our website, 973ESPN.com. You can watch it on your TV, your smartphone, your tablet. I mean, send it. Everybody has the uh, – I still have a dumb phone, Mike McGarry, but the people that have the phones that uh, can send it from your phone to your TV, you just, uh, just chill on your couch and – Watch that Cape Atlantic League championship game or come out and see us because I know you'll be there. I'll be there. Mike Gill will be there. Looking forward to seeing you in a little bit, my friend. Looking forward to catching up with you.